We're going to have a, a couple of speakers uh, this evening, and, and I'll also be introducing um, some people who are uh, members of the General Assembly or their representatives who are here tonight. But to lead us off uh, with a, a talk this evening is Cindy Adams Dunn. Uh, Cindy is Secretary of the Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources and is a true friend of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission and of conservation in Pennsylvania. Uh, Cindy also served as President and CEO of Penn Future, a statewide environmental advocacy organization. She worked for DCNR uh, in, in a previous administration uh, as Deputy Secretary of Conservation and Technical Services and as a director of the Bureau of Recreation and Conservation and of the Office of Education, Communications, and Partnerships. Uh, sh her other leadership roles include serving as executive director of Audubon, Pennsylvania, for several years, and as the Pennsylvania program director for the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, a very significant organization uh, in which Pennsylvania has played a key role. She's received numerous awards for her leadership in conservation, uh, including awards from the Pennsylvania Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs, uh, the Chesapeake Bay Environmental Leadership Ward, and the Appalachian Audubon Society. Uh, Cindy also holds a bachelor's and a master's degree in biology from Shippensburg University, and she reminded me a few minutes ago that her and her husband, Craig, who live in Cumberland County, uh, are uh, avid birders, canoers, and fisher people. And I, I assume her fishing license is up to date. Uh, John, we might want to check that. So I give to you Cindy Adams Dunn. Cindy. Well, I've got to tell you something about that license. Um, my three-year license needs to be renewed. And I will do that before the opening day on Saturday, John, so not to worry. <laughs> And, and I will say, I've had, uh, over the years, varying conversations with waterways patrolmen, most of them very positive, most of them uh, related to the conditions and the habitat and what I was seeing. But one of them did relate to a size issue uh, on a fish. And it fortunately, frankly, was in my fry pan at that point. And uh, the head size <laughs> was a little questionable. I just had to, we both had to assume it had a very long head. Um, <laughs> But um, the waterways patrolman gave me, came, went back to his uh, vehicle and came with a, um, a tape, you know, a measuring tape that you stick in your canoe and said, Cindy, he said, stick this on your canoe. <laughs> so, so on that issue, but the, you learn once and, and you uh, don't repeat it. I, I, I hope many of you got a chance to talk to Governor Tom Wolf and Francis Wolf in the lobby. And, um, you know, I know they both buy a fishing license. And, you know, I've, I've actually sort of wondered to what degree they get out there and fish, given their busy lives. But I found out uh, who the true angler in the family really is. Uh, Francis Wolf um, took up fly fishing after watching the movie and reading the book, A River Runs Through It. And she said that she just learned the magic of uh, getting out there in a stream and uh, studying the stream, uh, you know, learning, learning the trade and... and uh, the intricacy of the fly fishing and the stream, and she's really a true believer in something she really enjoys. So, and that family, um, you know, Francis Wolf is a uh, lead angler. So I'm really uh, honored and touched to be asked to be part of this tonight, uh, honoring the legacy of this once wonderful institution, the Fish and Boat Commission. Uh, it's been around 150 years. It's uh, quite a legacy. Uh, besides uh, the role that we share with the agency in conservation uh, with our with DCNR, I also uh, serve on the Fish and Boat Commission's Ralph Abel Legacy Committee with folks like Dennis Geis, Wayne Cover, John Arway, and the many existing and past um, commission staff. And it carries forward that legacy of Ralph Abel, and that project has yielded um, many, many great outcomes. Uh, including a scholarship award, the legacy being to really bring youth and um, provide scholarships so that uh, young people can get an education to carry on Ralph's legacy going forward. So the uh, commission and its various volunteers, the commissioners and others, um, have a forward uh, look in mind. So while we're celebrating history tonight, I think we're also uh, slingshotting this mission forward in the actions and uh, ideals that are expressed here tonight. I want to acknowledge my 
my uh, partner and friend in the cabinet, Secretary John Quigley, Secretary of DEP, whose job is to keep the water clean so that we have a uh, great habitat for the aquatic life uh, that Fish and Boat Commission works so hard to protect, that DCNR works so hard to protect the watershed. And uh, the Governor's Sportsman Advisor, Rob Miller, who's uh, here somewhere. Rob, raise your hand. Rob uh, works to connect the dots between uh, Game Commission, Fish and Boat Commission, DCNR, DEP, and all the sportsmen, uh, stakeholders out there who care so much about Pennsylvania's uh, natural resources and the outdoors and really bring this to a, a fine point to advise the governor on issues affecting habitat, uh, waterways, and sportsmen. So tonight's a celebration of the history of this great institution, but it's a moment in, in Fish and Boat Commission's future. It's got a robust mission. A lot of people maybe know one part of the mission, but there's a very robust mission to restore the shad migration in the Susquehanna, its original purpose, 150 years ago. It manages fish, reptiles, amphibians, aquatic life, boating, engaging youth in the outdoors, and much, much more. And the, game, the Fish and Boat Commission's mission, along with the Game Commission's and DCNR's, is more important today than it ever was, given the various uh, both threats and opportunities facing Pennsylvania today. Primary uh, threat being youth today spend six hours in front of a screen of some kind, whether it's an iPhone or iPad, TV. Uh, youth of today are not uh, outdoors as much as a lot of people sitting in this uh, room, room were. That, that's a threat to our conservation mission going forward. Who's going to fill this auditorium 150 years from now and care as deeply about the natural resources of Pennsylvania as the people sitting here tonight do? Uh, climate change with a changing world. Uh, climate change could bring the water of the Carolinas, uh, the temperature into Pennsylvania. So the work we do together on habitat, riparian buffers, protecting watersheds, uh, protecting aquatic resources is more important today than ever. Uh, DCNR uh, shares a very strong and productive relationship with Fish and Boat Commission. We really look to them for help on a number of things. Uh, when you think of fishing and boating, uh, your image often goes to perhaps a state park where maybe you've taken some kids fishing on a state park lake, or maybe a state forest land where that cool uh, hemlock lime stream coming out of a mountain is where you're fishing for um, a brook trout. And, and that may be on state forest land, the 2.2 million acres of state forest land. And when many uh, people take to uh, the regional opening day on the Saturday, they'll be heading to a state park uh, to, to go fishing. So that provides a great entry-level opportunity for a lot of people in angling. And we really enjoy that uh, partnership with Fish and Boat Commission. Several of the areas that we collaborate and enjoy, uh, and enjoy some uh, partnership include outreach, habitat, and commitment to safety. And in the area of outreach, we're, both agencies are committed to reaching out to the youth of today to engage them in our mission. And it's no longer enough um, to provide a stream, it's no longer enough to provide a park, it's no longer enough to tell people to get out there. We need to train them. A lot of times that connection with a parent has been lost. Kids today need a program. A lot of kids today need a program to connect them. And the Fish and Boat Commission uh, leads on this. They um, train DCNR staff and provide loaner equipment uh, for kids to learn how to fish. In fact, we have fishing tackle that is provided by the Fish and Boat Commission available in 43 state parks. That's just one good example of how our agency's missions align so well. Uh, boating and water safety awareness. Fish and Boat Commission is responsible for that, and they uh, help train our staff and help uh, collaborate with our rangers and our staff on uh, safety in the waterways and provide safety boater education for people and certificates for our staff. The amphibian and reptile curriculum, a lot of times people think of Fish and Boat Commission, they just think of fish, but amphibians and reptiles are under the jurisdiction and protection of the Fish and Boat Commission. And to help engage uh, youth in these incredible uh, species of Pennsylvania, they have developed a curriculum that we offer in the state parks. And of course, there's a fishing skill. There's nothing, uh, as many people here know, there's nothing that engages uh, kids more directly in the environment than learning how to fish. It just brings so much uh, to bear in terms of habitat, in terms of the outdoor experience, connection to an adult. Many of us uh, got our connection to the outdoors through uh, fishing. And uh, Fish and Boat Commission really works with us on uh, those fishing skills and engaging kids and youth in that, in that engagement. 
habitat work. Um, since 1988, Fish and Boat Commission has completed habitat improvement projects on 31 DCNR lakes. And in 2015 alone, uh, there were active projects on 15 state park lakes. The shoreline habitat structures are a win-win for both agencies, and we convert safe, eroded, un you know, safe, unsafe eroded banks into safe fishing spots and do habitat enhancement and shoreline stabilization. And last year, uh, approximately 800 volunteers turned out to do this work. So thanks to uh, those of you in this room, whether it's the Fish and Boat Commissioners that were involved or local watershed groups, uh, local State Parks Friends groups, who helped with this uh, wonderful uh, volunteer work. Commitment to safety. Both DCNR and Fish and Boat Commission conduct uh, patrols and share information to help keep uh, users of our waterways safe, uh, you know, bo boaters, canoeists, kayakers, and you name it. And we conduct joint training and support each other during medical and boating emergencies and help fill the communication gaps that are needed uh, in, in reducing response time when there's an emergency. With this history of cooperation in place, I can't help but be excited about how our agencies and partnerships will grow in the decades to come. I think all involved in engaging people in the outdoors uh, will continue to work together and look, at, look for how we can continue to promote outdoor recreation, improve access and care for aquatic resources or land resources in the riparian forest buffers, stream banks, upland forest, and all the habitats that matter to our aquatic life. I think a bright future lies ahead for the Fish and Boat Commission. They're really poised uh, to tackle their mission for the next 150 years. And um, in fact, their, their mission got a little brighter last week, I think. On, uh, on March 23rd, Senate Bill 1168 was reported from this, the Senate Game and Fisheries Committee. The committee members aren't here, but I would like to thank uh, you know, Senator John Eichelberger, Senator John Wozniak, Senator Rich Alloway, Senator Jim Brewster, and Senator Mario Scavello for their great leadership on this important legislation. And uh, I think, you know, to, to meet their mission, the Fish and Boat Commission needs a fee increase, and this bill will allow them to operate as a 20th century agency should and be able to set their own fees. And that's, it's about time for that, and I'm glad to see uh, a bill moving that will, uh, will support that. And it's what's needed to keep this important agency healthy in the years to come and to, uh, to meet this, uh, its mission and mandate. I want to thank the dedicated staff of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, both past and present, and the commissioners who serve as volunteers on this board and give their time and uh, dedicate their, uh, their time to this important agency. We've all worked uh, tirelessly to fulfill our constitutional mandate that both agencies share to conserve and maintain Pennsylvania's natural resources for the benefit of all people, including generations yet to come. We at DCNR are honing our efforts to fill that mandate, and we look forward to working with the Fish and Boat Commission and the conservationists, anglers, and boaters of tomorrow to protect and enjoy waters that are clean, cool, and protected. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Cindy. And that is one example of a partnership that uh, the Fish and Boat Commission has uh, with a, a state agency, and there are many others, including with the General Assembly. And next on our agenda is to acknowledge uh, members of the General Assembly who are here with us tonight. Um, when I call your name, if you would simply stand and raise your hand, raise your hand if you were here, uh, State Rep Representative Keith Gillespie the Majority Chair, Keith, thank you, <clears throat> of the House Game and Fisheries Committee. Right. Uh, Senator Richard Alloway. Senator, are you here with us this evening? S Senator Alloway, who Cindy mentioned, uh, serves District 33, which is Adams uh, and part of Cumberland, Franklin, York, and York counties. Senator Pat Vance. Senator Vance, are you here with us this evening? She's not here, but she uh, uh, serves uh, District Number 31, which is part of Cumberland and part of York County. Uh, State Representative Greg Rothman. Representative Rothman, you're not here. Okay. Re Representative Rothman serves District Number 87, which is part of uh, Cumberland County. State Representative Will Tallman. Mr. Tallman, are you here, here tonight? Okay. He serves District Number 193, which is part of Adams and Cumberland County. 
I, I do believe we have with us uh, Sarah Casson. Sarah, are you here with us tonight? Sarah? Sarah is the... <clears throat> Sarah is, is the Minority Executive Director from Senator James Brewster's office, uh, who is the Minority Chair of the Senate Game and Fisheries Committee. Uh, he represent, represents District Number 45, which is part of Allegheny and part of Westmoreland County in the western part of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Uh, we have uh, Adam Wagenseller. Adam, you, are you here with us tonight? Adam is Director of Administration from State Representative Michael Hanna's office, District Number 76, which is part of Center and Clinton County in the north central part of the state. Uh, Norm Zumas, a staff member from Representative Ron Marsico's district office. Norm, are you here? Norm, thank you for coming. Of course, Representative Marsico serves part of Dauphin County. And we have two special guests that arrived uh, this evening, I think somewhat un uh, unexpectedly, and that's Mike Nussman and Glenn Hughes from the American Sport Fishing Association. You're back there somewhere. If you... I, I asked Steve Kralik where, exactly where the American Sport Fishing Association is, is housed, is headquartered, and he said, on the Beltway around Washington, D.C., so I guess that, that gives it some clout and some credibility uh, being near the nation's capital, an important organization. Next, we want to acknowledge uh, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission Board of Commissioners, and Commission President Ed Masharka is going to come forward along with the other commissioners, and Ed is going to uh, share a few words with us. Governors, staff, senators, representatives, distinguished guests, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission staff, our fellow boaters and anglers. As president of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, I am honored to stand before you representing my fellow commissioners to my left. We are extremely fortunate to be commissioners during this very special anniversary, but even more fortunate to have been selected to serve as a PFBC commissioners by the governor and the Senate. Carrying forward the legacy of the originally founded Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission is an honor and a privilege for us. Our responsibilities, which we take extremely seriously, is to ensure the continued protection, conservation, and enhancement of the aquatic resources of the Commonwealth through the development, debate, and implementation of sound business or sound policies. As Senator Dun or Cindy Dunn said, the Constitution of Pennsylvania, which we've all been sworn to uphold and defend, states the people have a right to clean air, pure water, and to the preservation of the natural, scenic, historic, and aesthetic values of the environment. Pennsylvania's public natural resources are the common property of all people, including our generations yet to come. As trustees of these resources, the Commonwealth shall conserve and maintain them for the benefit of all people. So collectively, we as commissioners represent the entire population of Pennsylvania, even though we may live along the shores of Lake Erie, the banks of the Delaware River, a mountain stream in Tioga County, or near a man-made lake somewhere in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. However, we all share one common bond, we are Pennsylvania boaters and anglers. To our fellow commissioners that came before us, we say thank you for a job well done. Your hard work, commitment, and policies have ensured the continuation of this great agency, making it possible for us to stand here today, 150 years after its founding. Due to those efforts of the past commissioners, and directors. Sound judgment, foresight, and aquatic resources of Pennsylvania today are richer and well protected for this and future generations as the Constitution guarantees. 
For us as commissioners, we take no credit for any accomplishments at this time. The impact of our efforts, the policies yet to be realized, assessed, and adjudged, we can only hope that when we are judged by those that will come after us, they'll say about us, thank you and a job well done. We thank everyone for your participation tonight. We appreciate you for joining us at this very special celebration, and thank you for coming. And I'd like to introduce each commissioner individually. We already met Ed Masharka, uh, Commission Vice President Blade Squires. Blade. Thank you. Blade is from Chester County. Uh, commissioner Rocco Ali. Rocco? From Armstrong County. Commissioner G. Warren Elliott. <laughs> Voting at large commissioner from Franklin County. Commissioner Norman Gadlick from, <laughs> from Luzerne County. Commissioner Eric Hussar from Union County. <laughs> commissioner Stephen Ketterer. Voting at large commissioner from Dauphin County. Commissioner Leonard Litchvar <laughs> from District 4, which is, which is Somerset County. And Commissioner William Sabatos <laughs> Now we have something special to say here. I don't, I'm not sure that you're aware we were going to say this or not, <clears throat> but uh, Commissioner Sabatos is from Elk County, and he is the Commission's longest serving commissioner. As of today, he has served 28 years, 3 months, and 22 days. And his wife, Faye, is here in attendance with him as well. Thank you very much, Commissioners. <laughs> Former Commission members uh, that we'd like to acknowledge here tonight. Uh, John Huggia and his wife Karen from Halsopel, PA. John, are you here with us this evening? John? John served from January of 75 to January of 1982. We also have D. Mark Faulkner from Mechanicsburg. Mark. Mark is over there. He served from June 86 to December of 87. We have Howard Gary Flugfelder. Howard, are you here? I, okay, I don't think he is, but anyway, he served from November of 1990 to August 2006. Donald Anderson from Myersdale, Pennsylvania. <laughs> He served from May 95 to July of 2009. William Warobic. William, are you here with us this evening? Yes, he is. <laughs> he served from June of 2006 to October of 2014. Uh, we also have Dr. Robert Bachman. Dr. Bachman. And, and his wife, Gail is here, I believe, with us tonight. Uh, Dr. Bachman served from April 2007 to April 2015. Uh, there are a few members of the Boating Advisory Board that we would like to acknowledge as well. Uh, Mary Gibson, Mary from Marysville. She's here with us tonight, thank you. Henry Grilk and his wife, Anne Marie of Lakeville. And Lauren Lust Lustig and his wife Louise of Biglerville. Lauren, are you here with us tonight? No, I guess not. Okay. 